Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulul amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself, an abdukal ajisu da'ifu, miskinu, zalim, jahal and the, we're weak, we're poor, we're ignorant and to be nothing and that Allah is great, Allahu al qani wa ana faqir billahi ta'ala, Allah Zabajal is the one whom is great and rich beyond imagination and that we are poor servants of Allah poor in every aspect within our character, character, within our physicality, with everything and to enter and move in this proximity through the oceans of humility and modesty that Allah dress us and bless us that what we were reading of the du'a that Allah is free to write and rewrite whatever destiny He wants on the Ummul Kitab and that this is a night in which is a blessed night in which Allah revealed what Allah wanted to reveal. And some awliyaullah teach that the entirety of Qur'an was revealed to the soul and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and Allah teaches in Qur'an, Alam al-Qur'an badan khalaq al-insan. So this is very important because these haqqaiqs and realities they're like beads that you know like beads in your pocket but the reality of the shaykh is to string them together so that you understand what's happening. Because many people will say, what do you mean Qur'an was revealed? It came over 23 years. It came over to me and you over 23 years. But Sayyidina Muhammad is what Allah is describing in Holy Qur'an, Alam al-Qur'an khalaq al-insan. These are an ancient reality when Allah is describing, I have taught the Qur'an and even the timing is not necessarily the same timing because we are not familiar with Allah's timing. Qur'an is like a series of references but not time. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. And stamps by time, Alam al Qur'an, when did that take place? Ancient, Khalaq al Insan, when did that take place? Very different time. An ancient reality when Allah wanted to be known, a treasure wanting to be known. At that moment in which Allah wanted to be known, Kut fayakun, that light comes into existence. The moment that light comes into existence, Allah alam al Qur'an means that the power of that light is the alam al Qur'an that Allah's Sifat al Alim is an ancient power dressing the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah in the world of light. So the immensity of that light in which Hadith al-Jabbar describes 
that what was the first thing that Allah created before there was any heaven, before there were any angels, before there was anything was the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah before Adam was even in clay and in water. Means this creation of this ancient light of God wanting to be known, means that the Divine, the Presence is a hidden secret and will always remain hidden. And what is known is creation but the Divine and Allah the Creator's hidden reality. What is known is this light, the light of the heavens and from that light came all paradises, from that light came the holy throne, from that light came the angels, from that light Bayt al-Mahmur, from the light Umm al-Kitab, from the light everything you can imagine is from that light. So when Allah describes we can write destinies and change destinies in Umm al-Kitab. Allah now giving a direction that it's not in Allah's unwitnessed will because Allah has a will, amr and irada. Allah's unknown will is remaining unknown. But what Allah is describing that we can confirm and negate any destiny and anything we want and we do it in Umm al-Kitab, the mother of books. Means why? Because we describe the book of Allah is Sayyidina Muhammad That is the electronic tablet, the reality of light in which Allah Allam al-Qur'an has taught everything, every reality. Allah's Divinely speech dresses the light. Blesses the light is the power of that light. That as a result, Umm al Kitab is the section of that light that is not the Quran and not Furqan. What we have of Furqan, Mus'haf, is the right and wrong. So, means that people have access. And everyone has access to Fuqan. So they pick up the Qur'an and they begin reading. But in reality we saw, we taught before that the Qur'an reads you and as a result it looks to you and who are you and what's your level of belief, what's the level of your cleanliness. More powerful than your iPhone that looks now to your eye and before it looked at your finger. Now their, 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 their functions and, and biofunction is, is stronger but getting towards the heavens understanding. So the Qur'an immediately looks at your eye and through your eye it can see the light of your entire soul because they say that this, the eyes are the window to the soul. So completely reads the servant. If they don't have what's necessary then the Qur'an begins to teach them Furqan, right and wrong. So that to correct whatever they read is a correction for them, don't do this and don't do that, do this and don't do that. Alhamdulillah and if Allah guides that servant towards goodness and then begins to have the respect and admiration of Sayyidina Muhammad the Qur'an is witnessing that. Because what we say is from the heart and when we, when we give the shahada and the witnessing it's for us to witness. Allah doesn't need to witness what He's written as our destiny but for ourselves, our nafs, our soul to witness, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa habibuhu wa rasuluhu sallam. It's for our soul to witness. As soon as that shahada is written, is written onto the soul that the servant has regained their consciousness 
and regain their status of witnessing and their paradise reality. As a result now Furqan looks into their eye and into their soul and slowly begins to reveal the next one which is Qur'an. Means that same Furqan but it witnesses the light of the Arabic Messenger. Means the light of Sayyidina Muhammad because as soon as they testified with their shahada the nur of Muhammadi is activated within their being and within their wujud. That that was a trust for them that they came onto the earth from the Muhammadan haqqaiqs, from the Muhammadan paradises, from Nabi Ahmad's realm. They came onto this earth of shaitan and forgot who they were and where they belong. And as soon as they give their witnessing and giving their shahada, they reactivate a light within their soul and within their heart that they have recognized their paradise reality. At that time the Qur'an reads their eye and reads their soul and begins to reveal the Qur'an and the Holy Qur'an to the servant. And those whom Allah grants their sainthood and sincerity and that they operate through sincerity and that they reach a station of faith in which they love the love of Prophet more than they love themselves. And all the teachings that go on to describe the oceans of sincerity that's all witnessed in the soul that's witnessed in their entire being. And when the Qur'an looks into their eye immediately unlocks the codes from Ummul Kitab. Means that from their teachings the people are not understanding that we read the same book, where does this come from? Well because it's coming from a higher encryption. As a result of that higher encryption means then these haqqaiqs and these realities are coming out. And they come out all from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Hence why we teach people to love Prophet Do your durood sharif do your salawats, your buraq is your tasbih. When you take your tasbih and say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad like a rocket, you're firing into that presence. That is the miraj, that is the israhi wal miraj, that is everything. So then these ashiqeen, their souls reside within that presence. You know their ashiqeen by what they teach. You know their ashiqeen by their entire demeanor that all they teach are the haqqaiqs and the realities and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad So means then their souls are dressed from these lights, blessed from these lights. This is the importance of that ishq and that love. So on nights like tonight when Allah is giving for Shab al Barat that make your forgiveness, ask your forgiveness, have good character, good deeds, good actions, and to keep the company of these ashiqeen and muhibbeen. Why? Because they move within that vicinity, they're located within that vicinity, that they're in the oceans in the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and Ummul Kitab is emanating from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad And when Allah is going to write means the, the holy speech of Allah's qul is dressing the heart in the inner depth of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Means the irada state of Sharb al-Bara is when the irada and is going to now manifest to become the Amr, the state in which Allah's will will be known. 
what Allah is writing upon the soul of Prophet in that level at that reality is called Ummul Kitab in the mother of all books because everything has to manifest through Muhammadun Rasulullah Hey when I talk look forward, you're distracting me guys. This one, when I talk look forward because I'm seeing everything in the room. You keep looking around and distracting my, my talk. Yeah. InshaAllah where were we? On the Ummul Kitab. <laughs> It's like a classroom, I have to look inside the room otherwise I just put a picture and I can look at the picture is easier but I have to look inside the room everyone's looking in somewhere else. InshaAllah, Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izzat Amma Yasifoon Wa Salaamun Al Mursaleen Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa Hurmati Muhammad Al Mustafa Wa Basiri Surat Al Fatiha. When I talk don't move, don't move a pen, don't move nothing, just look straight so that the connection comes. You start going like this and looking back and looking left and everywhere, it cuts the entire connection, inshaAllah. Do you have any questions for tonight? As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah What is the reality of birthday of Imam Mahdi salam being on the same night day as Shabbat Barat, 15th Shaban. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. InshaAllah. It should be blessed, is it the 15th of Shaban and uh, inshaAllah. It should be a blessing if that's the date, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa In relation to the topic the other day, you once mentioned the Kaaba also the presence of the prophetic soul inside of it. What's the reality of that? That what makes the Kaaba to be holy? That uh, you know a, a location from stones with one stone from paradise, it can't be making everything holy. So there's an arwa, there's a secret within the Kaaba and that the love of Sayyidina Muhammad is located within that vicinity. As a result of that love Allah put the love and the soul, a reality from the light of Sayyidina Muhammad within the Holy Kaaba. And as a result all the Prophet's lights come to be present, all the Holy Companions lights come to be present, all the Ahlul Bayt lights come to be, come to be present and all awliyaullah fi samah wa fil ard. As a result of their lights being present, the precincts become holy. And Allah is with Nabi'een, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin. So there's a reality that Allah won't be there alone and because of their presence Allah is saying, I'm with them. That Allah put that light to be there, made the arwa of Prophet just one of the lights of Prophet to be at that location and proximity. As a result that brings all of the barakah and the immense realities. Tabarak, all of Hajj is a system of tabarak. So everywhere we're going on Hajj, every ritual that's being performed on Hajj is tabarak. Maqam al-Ibrahim, why do people stop at Maqam al-Ibrahim? Because it represents a reality from Sayyidina Ibrahim So why the Hajj al-Aswad, why the Kaaba, all of them are tabarak. So the reality of the Kaaba, one of them 
is then the light of Prophet is located in with that. And the awliya know it because they see their soul inside and they see the people making tawaf around. So as a result of that barakah Allah with Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi with Salihin and Allah says, then come and make tawaf around them. So similar to the sun, the sun is a source of light. So then what that sun represents of the Divine Souls and the Divinely Presence and as a result ask the earth, make tawaf around the sun. Now extreme ignorance begins to come again in which people say, no the earth is flat and the sun is making tawaf around the earth because they, they, they propagating ignorance. So the earth is round and the earth is traversing the sun. The earth is making a sama because of the haqqaiq of awliyaullah. They don't have philosophy, they have reality. When Allah want to grant them a knowledge that, that creation, creation can appear in front of them and explain itself for them. But they don't have to voyage the earth like a dunya person taking a boat and a ship and then map out the earth and they, they've, they sailed here, they sailed there. Allah make the earth come to them, merely in their tafakkur they sit the earth will come and give a complete map of it and slow and they can draw it. That's why then the map of those awliya or astonishing people, then they have to make up their, their ridiculous knowledge to try to explain the maps. Yeah we don't know when they traversed the earth and how they, they documented every corner of the globe even the parts that are supposedly under ice because they don't understand how haqqaiq is, is working. For Allah's servant, they're servants of the Divine, everything in creation serves them. When they want to know of the sun it'll appear to them and begin to rotate and begin to talk to them and teach them. So their uloom and their knowledges are the reality, they become the standard for haqqaiqs and reality. Everyone else is hypothesis, they hypothesize based on the standard of the community. When the community like a wind begins to become ignorant they go back into caveman philosophy that this is flat and because it's flat there's a circle around us that's ice and nobody can go beyond <laughs> that circle of ice. And yeah because we are in a second jahiliyyah and this is a sign for the arrival of Sayyidina Mahdi so Islam is a shining bright light, all its haqqaiqs teach you in every angle. Say, why shaykh? I said, because I just taught you, the light is eternal. As a respect all creation must circumambulate that which is eternal, it's the hierarchy. The sun is the he, the earth is the she, must follow. But there they reverse their genders. And they're trying to make the she is standing and he's making tawaf, right? They're gender confused in every aspect of Allah's creation. They're confused about the planets now, they're confused about themselves. A people who don't know themselves and even Allah gave them genitals to know themselves and they still don't know themselves, they're lost, lost less than apes, at least the ape knows itself. So then imagine anything else they want to teach you is confused and lost. That's why you're, you're hearing all these bizarre philosophies come back out. But alhamdulillah because of the haqqaiqs they teach, no the light is eternal and that eternal light it shines its realities and it's not fake and that's not fake and the moon is a reflection. 
the moon didn't just park itself like a, a truck. They say the moon came and parked itself. No, Allah described noon because it has a ship in an orbit and that Allah placed it within that orbit and nothing moves it. And as a result of that orbit it has a direct effect upon our light, on this existence on this earth. And why? Because there are awliya who are at that station, that's maqam al-fardani. If the moon has an effect on your personality and the lunation and the power of the reflection of the sun. Imagine the awliya who represent maqam al-fardani because the moon is an object and sun is, وَلَكَ الْكَرَامْنَ بَنِي adam. Allah you are my noble, my honoured creation. So when somebody studies, look at how much power this moon has on this earth. If it shines too much light, people become lunatics, right? So similar are the awliya. If you spend too much time around them, you become lunatic because <laughs> they can't handle the lights. They lose their senses, they lose their ability to cognitive understanding and realities. So no time they call majdoob, they go. But Naqshbandiyat al-Aliya is to teach how to ground yourself, keep control and to be grounded. But the purpose of studying outside is to understand the reality inside. So whatever you studied of the power of the sun, then imagine those whom their hearts are more powerful than the sun. How they can burn away sins, how they can take the, the elements around and consume the elements and give light. So we have many talks on these. The rising sun is all about the sun and the moon and the reality of the sun and the moon. If you study that you wouldn't be asking, is this earth flat? Because the rest of them, the, the, the haqqaiqs explain that, that the importance of the moon and how the moon is a reality for us, the importance of the sun and how it's a reality for us. So these are all very deep realities. But because everyone is now completely confused, shaitan has played with them. So when you see what's happening and how shaitan has played with people, then there should be no surprise that shaitan is playing with everyone. Everyone now is just a, a mouse for shaitan to play with. That's why this is the school of good manners and good character. When you come across somebody talking bad about the shaykh, completely divorce yourself, don't engage with it, shut the door quickly because shaitan is coming through your ear or through your eyes. So be very careful of that because shaitan is like a sending rats everywhere. That if the rat enters in it will never leave, it will plant itself and impregnate itself into the home and begin to spread its toxicity. You see the danger of the rat is that it enters and it begins to put its droppings all over the counter, the floor. Why? To make everyone sick. You can't coexist with the rat because it makes everyone sick from its waste. And that's exactly what shaitan knows, it's just open the door a little bit for the rat to come in. And that's why the tafakkur, the contemplation, all of these are to build our connection, build our manners. That everything is based on manners, to have good manners, not to have the manners of, of a rodent spreading toxicity and, and poisons. And through 30 years of doing this and understanding every time these attacks come, stay quiet and don't spread it, don't be around it, have nothing to do with it. All day long they send information about this shaykh did that, this tariqah did this, this one did that. Immediately cut the person off, have nothing to do with them, they are now in rat category and they're toxic and sick and that's the danger. If you listen, you've opened the door now for that rat to come in and it's going to come and spread its waste and its contamination to make people sick. That's 
only way to explain it because people just don't seem to understand. We gave this talk a couple years ago on bird box, right? Because the emanations would become very powerful. But unfortunately people are listening to the wrong sound and the wrong energies. So if they connect and they're good with their connection and they understood the connection, they should build their energy very fast for what things are coming on this earth. If they're not and they give themselves to their lower desires, bad desires, bad characteristics and that's why we describe the chair. When somebody's talking to you bad about a shaykh, who do you think is sitting on your chair at that time? You don't need us to explain it, we gave it in such a kindergarten understanding. Right? You think your soul sits on the chair and talks about shaykhs and, and descendants of the Prophet and somebody teaching haqqaiqs and… No, that your chair has no more soul on it and the shaitan is on the chair of that person talking, spewing, giving every type of uh, bad character, bad gossip, backbiting, all those characteristics. As a result now the bird box will open very strong for them, means that the satanic whisper and the vibration will overwhelm them, overwhelm their mind and every ability and every thought until it can manifest itself personally in their environment. So it's very, very dangerous, very, very toxic and, and very dangerous. That's why the teaching was to completely shut everything off. The sharia is that not to listen to backbiting, not to listen to whispering, not to even hear the slander. When someone says, I want to say something about your shaykh that shut the door right away. Otherwise the one who heard it is, is as contaminated as the one who spoke it. And now you entered into very dangerous sort of uh, conditions. And this coming on Laylatul Bara in which Allah is writing the destinies of people. So you can see how, how sort of ruthless shaitan is and how ruthless he is with people whom are trying to make their path and their way to salvation. It's not something small, it's, it's, it's something that you practice and keep making your connection and pray that Allah safeguard yourself and if, uh, if you to stand strong so that your family stands strong for if you go down your whole ship goes down. So that's, you know, the easiest way is to take the captain out. So if you take a captain out then the whole ship will go down. If you take out the family then the, the whole family collapses. So this is not something, you know, the philosophy is very real. Just look at the world around you, they're all confused and uh, horrifically modifying themselves, their bodies and their, their entire being. It's a very, very dangerous time. We pray that Allah save us, Allah. save us and bless us with these practices, with this love and this ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Alaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. In your talk last week about frequency and the need to be rooted so our building don't fall when testing comes, are we going to hear and see the planned frequency war? Yeah, of course, you're already seeing it now. We talked about that. You go back to listen to that talk, you're, you're already in the war. As soon as you enter into your home, the microwave is trying to attack you, your television is attacking you, your phones are attacking you, your computer is attacking you. It's all been delivered and uh, developed at a frequency to destroy your brain. At your human cell frequency it was developed. They didn't use a higher frequency, they didn't use a lower frequency, they used the frequency of brain waves. So you're already under attack, it's already been under attack. That's why the only way to fight ignorance, قُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْ Right, Allah say, tell them when the truth comes falsehood is perishing and falsehood by its nature is zahukan. Crumbles, has no stand on it. So, it means if you do the zikr, you do the muraqabah, you do the meditations, you build a shield of energy. And that's we gave the whole talk of all of that. The prayer, every letter of the prayer, when you make the prayers, they're teaching you now the reality that there's a huruf that you're imitating 
the angel and the qadim of that huruf is dressing the servant with its realities. If they know the realities then they get into the haqqaiq of that huruf which is immensely more powerful. So then these are all shields of energies to counter what they're putting in and what they're doing. But imagine the one who has no shield and that's why then you see all of these sort of horrific sicknesses and, and uh, cancers and all of these types of medical difficulties because the vibrations and the negativity are in everything, your microwave and your home and your food and the plastic and oh, everything, it won't end. But the counter because this is the, the life that Allah gave to us, the counter it is with your zikr, your salah, your practices, everything that Prophet brought and all of what awliyaullah have been inspired. So it's not just Jummah and not just the salah but all the tafakkur, the contemplations that Prophet is expanding the armament of the nation to prevent against the dajjalic system of energy that will be attacking. They will be attacking with energy, they will be using frequencies and sounds to shatter. So they're already on radio waves and music waves. All of those frequencies are designed to shatter and to gender confuse people. So if they destroy your energy, destroy your ability to vibrate everything within insan will begin to shatter and they use their frequencies for what they want to use it and begin to change people. That's not uh, by coincidence, that's because he wants it that way. I told you one rijal, one man of Allah is like a thousand men but even million men because if Allah give them power then that's something that can't be imagined. So there's a, no coincidence and what they're putting in food and frequencies everything is to take away the men, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Sayyidi, what should we do if we have close family members who tend to backbite a lot? Please forgive me for my ignorance. If you have close family close members what? Who Backbite a lot. Yeah, put headphones or something and then don't, don't listen because it contaminates anyone listening to it. And the qaybat and the backbiting is, is very dangerous. That's why the, the students who've been asked to leave, when they've been asked to leave it's because of bad character. And when they have bad character means their being out is already a sign of something. And we described before when Allah want to pull the knowledge from them, they begin to backbite and spread gossip and, and backbiting. Why? Because Allah is emptying them of whatever knowledges were given. It's the only way to lose knowledge. If you don't like something and you gained an immense amount of knowledge from it, you go your way. But when Allah want to pull the knowledge from you, that person begins to backbite and slander. As a result Allah is now pulling entirely the file out of the person until they're left like a hollow stump, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifu wa salaamu ala mursaleen. One more? Baya. InshaAllah. No I said uh, there's a group of people uh, they want baya Sayyidi. Oh the baya inshaAllah. Let's do the baya before the zikr inshaAllah. Has the bayat here? Awwadu billahi min shaitanir rajeem, rahim Inna alladheena yubayyunuka yubayyunullah yadullahi fawqa aydeem Inna ma naghudu nafsi yufudu ma ahad alayhullah fasiyyatun ajrun adeema Qadir billahi rabban wa islami deenan wa bi Sayyidina Muhammadun sallallahu alaihi wa sallam nabiyan wa rasulun wa Qur'an kitaban inna ma naqulu wakeel. Allah wa qabilna bi Sayyidina Sultanina awliya man Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani, Shaykhuna wa Mushidina, Sayyidina Sultanina awliya man Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al-Qani, Shaykhuna wa Mushidina 
و ما شیخ محمد آدم شیخ نو مشید نو فی برکت اولی الله سیما و شیخ شام کبانی شیخ عدنان کبانی اینا من نقول وکیل الله الله حق یا ربی الله الا شرف النبی صلی الله علیه و سلم و علی و اصحابی کرام غلم شیخین فی طریقت نشبنده ی تلالیه قصتا روح من طریقه قوی تخالیه که شان نشبا محمد ویس از بخاری سلطان اولی شیخ عبدال فایز دقستانی تا شیخ محمد نازم حقانی مانو شیخ شام کبانی شیخ عدن کبانی شیخ محمد آدم مرد خالق الخوشدوانی صاحب زمان سید محمد المهدی علیه السلام روح الله سیدنا ایس علیه السلام سیف الله سیدنا علیه السلام تو مثلا بک صدیق سيدنا عمر، سيدنا عثمان، إمام الحسن السلام، إمام الحسين السلام، سيداتنا فاطمة الزهراء السلام، شامة الفرداني عبد الرافي يمني يوسف الصديق، إمام العارفين لسان المتقارمين، عرفت يا معروف بن منهان، برهان كرام قوس الأنام صاحب وسيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام، وسائر وسادتنا وصدقين الفاتحة. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. Inshallah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.